So let's talk about egg allergies more in, more in depth here. Again, 90% of the people that I see with cancer have an IgG or hidden food allergies to eggs. So why is this? Take a second and imagine what is the cells and what is the tissue and egg really there to do. Those that egg will become a chicken. So how does it do that? Each of those cells is programmed with information about how to become other cells. They're called stem cells. They're not, there's no feathers in that egg, but they're, they're cells that are programmed to create feathers. So it's not the actual tissue itself, but it's more cells that are programmed. Well, if we look at, you know, cancer itself, cancer cells, cancer is also tissue that is not actually like the tissue it came from. It's kind of lost its ability to know what kind of cell it is and where it belongs and how it should function. So in the same way that in an egg there's no feathers, in a cancer cell there's not that complete expression of the DNA where the cell's actually becoming the tissue it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be. So there's an overlap, there's a crossroads between the two. One is losing its differentiation, the other will become more dif differentiated. And I think the problem is the immune system um, in the intention of not making a mistake with this very important uh, cell type, when it sees egg and there's an IgG allergen to trigger it, it will dedicate a lot of immune system resources. Okay, so it will so seriously distract the immune system from the surveillance that's supposed to take place to prevent cancer cells from growing within our body. We're making and producing cancer cells all the time. Anytime you make a trillion of something, you're going to make some incorrectly. But the body has mechanisms for that to prevent that from becoming a problem. But in the case of the egg allergy, it's not allowing the body to properly surveil and properly pr protect us against that egg, that uh, the cancer. The egg is distracting us from the job. Not only that, of course, with any allergen, we're going to create a higher level of inflammation and irritation in our system. So when we have immune system distraction plus inflammation and cell irritation, you're going to have a setup to create a case where you're going to have a patient become afflicted with cancer. And that's very often what I see in practice. The great thing about our testing, again, that I can't em em emphasize enough, it's the only lab that I know of, which is why I work with them, that develops a process that checks both the cooked version and the raw version of the egg. By doing that, you make sure you don't miss a huge piece of the puzzle because it's very possible to be allergic to the cooked but not to be allergic to the raw. And that's because if you imagine, a, let's say a raw egg is like a crumpled up piece of paper and then the cooked version is like opening that piece of paper, you're going to expose a lot more receptors, uh, protein structures that could create allergens in that case. So there's a testimonial two or, he, or two here that can help you understand really what the important aspect of avoiding your egg allergen is and to making sure if the test did only that it would be worthwhile even if people just did and this is why I do this test with all my nieces and nephews even if you just did this case, test to rule out an egg allergen you could be avoiding cancer for yourself or your family in the future and not just randomly or taking a shot in the dark, but really seeing is this something that could be I could be susceptible to that I can make a change to now that will change the function of, of my body going forward. Talk to anyone that's gone through the process of recovering or being treated for cancer, and I think they would validate that, that if you can avoid that, and here's a simple way that requires very little time or effort and honestly very little money based on the value of the information you're going to get back. Okay, so 
some testimonials here, and then I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, dairy in the next video and how dairy allergens can be a major source of emotional disease.